Okay, good morning from Calgary. We bring you the first lecture of the comprehensive skull base course by Professor Aicharian today. He will be talking about the basic principles of skull base anterior lateral. Uh, we have uh, panelists. Uh, I would like to quickly introduce them to all of us and then we can begin with the lecture. Uh, Dr. Manuel, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Uh, my, name, my name is Manuel. I am from Dominican Republic, but right now I am resident of uh, first year of neurosurgery in Moscow. Okay, welcome. Uh, Dr. Mohana, can you please introduce, unmute and introduce yourself, please. Hello, Dr. Mohana. Okay, Dr. Senhu, can you please introduce? Hello, Dr. Mohana, can you hear me? Okay, next, Dr. Sen, can you please introduce yourself? Hello? Oh, I'll unmute everybody. I'll, I'll... Yeah, I guess, I guess they are not able to... I'm, I'm just, I unmuted everybody. Go ahead, try yeah, it again. Yeah. Try it again. Try it again. Okay, Dr. Senhu, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, me? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Go ahead, Dr. Go ahead, Sen. Please introduce yourself. I can't hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, please tell where are you from? I'm from Tendo, yes, I'm a Sunday program from Tendo. Dr. Mogi. Hello, I'm Mogi from Sudan. Uh, this is in my fourth year. All right, okay, welcome to the panel. Dr. Sergi. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Serge Zimba. I am uh, a final year uh, neurosurgical resident in Zimbabwe. I'm from Cameroon, but I'm studying in Zimbabwe. Okay, okay, welcome Dr. Zimbabwe. Amin Mohammed. Amin Mohammed, can you please introduce yourself? <coughs> Hello, Dr. Amin. Dr. Amin Mohammed, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello? Yeah, hello? yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Uh, hello? Uh, okay, I guess there's some trouble with the. Uh, with Dr. Sakib Bakshi? Okay, Dr. Sakib is one of my alumni members. He is also graduated from Dow, so I don't know if he can. Hi, I am uh, Sakib. Hi. I am a neurosurgery resident at uh, Aachen Hospital, Karachi. Hi. Hi, nice to see you here. He's one of my Thank alumni you. members as well. Okay, so next, uh, Dr. Shafi. Hello, Dr. Shafi. Uh, my name is Mohammed Shafi. I'm from Kabul, Afghanistan. Shafi, I'm a neurosurgery resident in Afghanistan. Okay, welcome to the panel. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Faisal Al Badr, can you hear us? Thank you. Yes, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Faisal. I'm a final year a neurosurgical resident uh, in Kuwait. I'm doing my uh, residency in France. Marseille. Okay, welcome, welcome. Uh, Dr. Sotia, who is this? Uh, I don't recognize the name here. Dr. Mohana, can you hear us now? Yes, yes, can you hear? A very good evening yes. to everybody. Please introduce yourself. Yes, yes. This is Dr. Sashank. I'm uh, working as an assistant professor in Manipal Hospitals, New Delhi, India. Okay. So good Welcome. to see you all in time. Welcome. Okay, so Dr. Cherian, we are ready to start now. So it's all yours. Yeah. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, uh, yes, it's yes. a bit a bit low, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to uh, share now. Yeah. Can I please ask all the participants to mute their microphones? Okay, can you see? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. So you can you can see what I am uh, showing as a as a presentation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to talk about the basics of androlateral skull base. Okay, now skull base is a misnomer. You know, um, if you talk about skull base, we are talking about the base of the skull. It's not right. Okay, it's actually the brain base. We remove bone, skull base bone, to reach the brain's base. And you know, why do you have to reach the brain's base? Is the question. Now, unfortunately, the brain is not a ball or a cylinder. So, if you see, can you see this image? Yes. Yes? Yes. Right. So, if you see this image, you will understand that the brain is folded. Can you see this fold? This is the fold. Okay. Now, most of the things that you need, say for example, a planum meningioma or a craniopharyngioma will be here, a basal artip aneurysm will be, will be here. So all your interesting things are within the fold of this brain. So you have two options, either to retract this brain till you, know, you can tear and damage everything or you can unlock this brain. So unlocking the brain is in three dimensions. Now, the first dimension is the sagittal unlocking, which comprises of sphenoid ridge drilling, anterior clinoid process removal, orbital roof removal, etc., etc., And then you will be able to unlock the brain in the sagittal plane, okay? The second unlocking is actually is called axial unlocking. You see that is a temporal lobe. So this axial unlocking is again as you go backwards. Axial unlocking you can, uh, you have the cavernous sinus here. You do a pericavernous dissection and you take off this temporal lobe away. This is called axial unlocking. And the last bit of unlocking is is something what we are all familiar with. This is the oblique intradural unlocking, which is otherwise called sylvian dissection. So these are the three unlockings. So first is the sagittal unlocking, second is the axial unlocking, and third is the intradural oblique unlocking or sylvian dissection. Okay, so this is the first, this is the basic of skull base. Now, if you don't do it right, then calling yourself skull base surgeon is again a misnomer. You, instead of a brain based surgeon, you become a skull based surgeon. You know, some people do step one and step four. They forget step two and three. And after drilling out of skull base, they don't figure out, oh, why am I having all these difficulties again? So there is no use doing all this. This is something that I see with a lot of people. So that is why first thing first, you have to figure out why to do skull base. Why? How to do skull base? Okay. For example, when you are doing an axial unlocking, this temporal lobe has to move out extradurally. But if you have not drilled the squamous temporal bone, till the base of the temporal bone. This movement cannot be possible, it's not possible because the temporal base will restrict this temporal lobe from moving out. So if you do a Dollings approach and this does not move, the, your Dollings approach is useless. It is just to produce some cavernous bleeding and some deficits without really having any use. But if you drill it completely, uh, the squamous temporal bone is drilled up flush to the temporal base, then this temporal uh, 
temporal lobe can move out extradurally and then it increases your windows and it's useful. So this is the reason. So this is the first basic of skull base. Everybody understood? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes, very nice. Yes, very yes, nice. yes. Yes. Now, I am going to tell you about the next concept. Yes. Concept number two, orbito, we are talking about anterolateral skull base. Just anterolateral skull base. Now, <coughs> in anterolateral skull base, we talked about the unlocking. This thing is the most important bit in anterolateral skull base. This is called the meningo orbital band. It is at the junction of the frontal, temporal, and the orbit. The frontal lobe, temporal lobe, and the orbit extra durally is this band. This is the band when you see you have drilled enough sphenoid ridge and temporal floor, you see this band beautifully. And this, this side of the band is a superior orbital fissure, and this side of the band is this side of the band is the, the anterior clinoid process. But if you don't dissect this band under very high magnification, you have a problem. Okay, so let us look at this band now. You know the structure of the superior orbital fissure? It is like this. This is a it is like a deformed triangle. Okay, now let us add some more things into it. You have the third now, you have the fourth now, you have the V1 and you have the sixth now. Okay, and let us add cavernous sinus. This is not completely uh, accurate drawing. But this is just to depict how is the orbitomeningeal band dissection possible. So what is this? This is the frontal dura. What is this? This is the temporal dura. And what is this blue line? This blue line is the true cavernous membrane. Now what is, the diff what is important about the true cavernous membrane? In classic Dolan's technique, you peel that also off. If you peel that also off, you are into the cavernous sinus and you have a lot of bleeding. So if you, if you come laterally and take off this dura, take off this dura of the TCM, there will be no bleed. Okay, this is the advantage. This is called, you can read my paper. There is a paper in AJNS. It's called the bloodless technique something. And you can type cherian. Okay, you will, that is how I also get it. I don't remember the exact name. Just type bloodless cavernous technique and just type my name, you will get this paper. So uh, it is published. So now this is the cavernous, I um, mean, this is the anterior clinoid process. This is the frontal dura. This is the temporal dura. You cut here under high magnification and then. And then you will be able to get into this space. And after that, you will be able to dissect above, uncovering the anterior clinoid process. You'll be able to dissect laterally, taking this temporal dura off the TCM, and then we are good. Okay? So, second concept over. Everybody understood this? Yes. Yes, Professor. If there is any doubt, please tell me. Is okay? Okay. Okay, now I am, I am going to show you a video. Okay? The same concepts what we talked about. That is sagittal unlocking, axial unlocking. I, I'm not going to show you a video of Sylvian dissection because it's something that we do every day, okay? So, Sylvian dissection, maybe if you want, I can show you, but if you, because I, I do my Sylvian dissection under very, very high magnification. So, if you want to see, you can see, but now I'm going to show you a cadaver dissection video of uh, how to do 
the axial, sagittal and the axial and long. Can you see? Everybody? Yeah. Can you see? Yeah, we can see. Yes. 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 Okay. We are going to do very simple. We are going to see a simple craniotomy, frontotemporal approach. You can see how we dissect. Going subtemporal. A lot of people talk about uh, uh, interfacial and all that. It's subfacial dissection. It is a waste of time, interfacial dissection. Okay. So you go subfacial. The beauty of it is that you can expose this, the zygoma. If you want to do an OZ, it's very easy. Can you see how the zygoma is exposed now? And you are going all the way on the zygoma to the keyhole, okay? So you have exposed the orbital process, the keyhole and the zygoma, but you don't need to do an OZ, okay? Just You're exposing this fast and then you are going to start the craniotomy. Okay. This drilling. Huh? Remote? I don't know where is the remote. Okay, right. So we are going to do this drilling. We are going to make a small craniotomy there. Now we have made the craniotomy. That is the frontal lobe. That is the temporal lobe. Clear? Yes? Yes, yes. Everybody? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Now yes, yes. this yes. part, everybody yes. is familiar. Everybody do craniotomy in this way, it's right? Familiar. So it's familiar. Okay, fine. Very good. Now I am starting to go into unfamiliar territories. Okay, I will show you. I always have to show you something familiar before I start something unfamiliar. So now you are going to see something unfamiliar. Okay, now I am dissecting the frontal dura of the root of the ACP. I am drilling the temporal, uh, the greater wing of sphenoid nicely. Spend some time there. Now you get into this picture. Familiar? This dura is almost collapsing. That is why you see it like that. Usually it is not like this. Okay. So this is a frontal lobe. This is the orbitomeningeal band. And anybody can tell me what that is? Temporal uh, dura. Yeah, temporal dura. But can you see this extension of this temporal dura into the infratemporal fossa? Can you tell me what that is? Mandibular nerve. It's not uh, mandibular, it's maxillary now. Okay, mandibular will be. Okay, so, uh, so you have V2 here. You have the orbitomeningeal band here. Now I'm going to dissect that. Is familiar now? Is okay? Okay. Right. So. I'm going to dissect the orbitomeningeal band now. Can you see the plane happening? What am I doing? I am axially unlocking. The brain was like that. Okay. So I am unlocking this part so that this curve is gone. So I can reach the base of the brain much more easily. 
And along with that, I will do the sagittal unlocking also because I'll be taking off this anti-decliner process. So the brain, which was, which was completely like that, like, like that, follow my arrow, it was like that, we make it straight. Okay. So, but I am doing it in a bloodless way. So as we proceed, we are uncovering the anterior clinoid process. Can you see this membrane? This is the true cavernous membrane, okay? If you see the nerves, if you see the nerve, that means you have gone through the TCM and you will produce bleeding. That is why I am sitting for a long time there, trying to take my time. Some people want to be very fast and they they just cut the TCM. They, they don't care about it. They don't put microscope and they, they cut the TCM and then they produce horrendous bleeding. Okay. So we are taking our time, dissecting it nicely. Very fine dissection. It's only sub-millimeter thick, this membrane. So you have to be very careful. Okay. So you can see through the membrane, and this membrane ends at V2. There is no membrane at this V2 region because cavernous, uh, cavernous sinus is not there at V2. Cavernous sinus is only there this much. So this membrane, you can clearly see it is not present in, in and around V2. V2 is a nerve that you can see clearly. You can see the boundaries of the TCM. is less than a millimeter is uh, maybe less than 0.5 millimeter, this membrane. So you have to be very careful preserving it. As we are going back, now V2 is completely exposed. I'm going into V3. This is V3. Somebody was talking about mandibular nerve. We are going into V3 now. So you see, this brain, which was frontal lobe was like this and temporal lobe was like this. See how I have made it straight. This is sagittal and axial unlocking. So now if I enter here, our basal aneurysms, craniopharyngiomas are all very direct. Instead of retracting, there is no need to retract the brain. Okay, this is the genius of Dolan's approach. It is not just to take some cavernous sinus tumor. This is what all the skull based surgeons think. Ah, Dolan's approach, only for cavernous sinus. No, it's not correct. In fact, the cavernous sinus, in this kind of uh, approach can be used for a trigeminal schwannoma because the trigeminal schwannoma is right here. And this approach, without, uh, without any dural opening, you can take out the trigeminal schwannoma. But that is the least of the uses of this approach. This approach is used to axially unlock the brain. Okay, so you can see how I am progressively going. In this part, if I open the dura, you will get CSM. So you can see V1, V2, V3. Okay. And you can see the dural band here. And behind this dural band, this dural band, underneath this dural band is your GSPN. Okay, create a superficial petrosal nerve, which will go along with the carotid. The carotid will turn, GSPN will become median and enter into the, enter into the. Huh. Okay, that is for endoscopy. When we discuss endoscopic anatomy, we will discuss that. Okay, now that is GSPN. This is the beginning of the Kawase's triangle. Okay. So this is mobilizing the fifth nerve a little bit. Mobilizing the temporal lobe further. That is the Kawase's triangle. Okay. So we have V3 on one boundary, Peter's Ridge on one boundary, you have GSPN on one boundary, and behind the meatal depression, you have arcuate eminence. So R you have arcuate you have arcuate eminence, you have GSPN, you have V3, you have Petrus Ridge. 
and this is the IAM. Okay, you can see the meatal depression there. That is the IAM, that is the arcuate eminence. Not very prominent here, but this is the arcuate eminence, this is the IAM, this is the cochlea, and this is the cover. This L shaped is uh, drilling, is what you can do. This is Kawase. So I have just combined Dolang with Kawase. Okay. But what have I done? I have taken the brain and I have made it straight. I have taken a folded brain and I have taken it straight. Now you can see the sixth nerve. You can see the sixth nerve is coming there. That is a sixth on my arrow. That is the arrow and that is sixth nerve. Okay. This is V1. That is a fourth nerve. That is a third nerve. Okay. And that is that is a Petrus apex. Okay. So you can uh, see the carotid is here. So this is V3, covers a triangle, complete dolling exposed. Now I am going in and opening the dura at this part. Okay, very useful because you can see everything. Uh, intradural, extradural is a hybrid approach for paraclival, para, para, I mean, uh, para uh, cellar aneurysms, uh, I mean, uh, paraclinoidal aneurysms. All these aneurysms is very good because this is optic nerve now. This is intradural carotid. Once I take out the clinoid process, you will see the extradural carotid, that is C3. Okay. And then you can see this falciform ligament going and becoming the distal dural ring. You can excise the distal dural ring and you can mobilize the carotid. So it's very easy. Now I am drilling the anterior clinoid process. Thin it out completely. Take it out. This is the clinoidal triangle. The sharp tooth of the clinoid coming out. Very carefully you have to take it out. It can cause laceration in the carotid sometime. That is the sharp tooth of the clinoid coming out. You can see extradural carotid there. So that is the optic strut. Optic strut is, will also be taken out now. Optic strut is always in front of the vertical C3. Okay. So we are taking, that is extradural carotid. It's always in front. So that is optic strut. Sometimes you can, when you are taking out the optic strut, you can open into the sphenoid sinus. In that case, you have to plug it with muscle. So you have extradural, extradural carotid, extradural optic nerve. You have intradural optic nerve, you have intradural carotid. You saw that. See, extradural carotid, intradural carotid. Extradural optic now, intradural optic now. And you cut this band, which is connecting between the intradural and the extradural carotid. All your carotid cave aneurysms or your paraclinoid aneurysms, everything becomes much more easier. Okay. Then you can clip them medial to the third now. We will show you these cases. Okay. We will show you clipping these kind of aneurysms medial to the third now. Okay, this is the third now, it's a fourth now, V1, this is the this is the V2. Okay, so it's a classic Dolan's approach huh? with the uh, intradural opening. See the dural opening is so small, even then the exposure is so high. From here I can directly expose once I lit, get a little bit more dural opening, I can expose the basal arrow also. Okay. We will see that also. All right. So Two concepts today. First concept is unlocking. Second concept is uh, 
What was the second concept? Orbitomeningeal band. Okay. So two concepts is all for today. The next class we will talk about the carotid. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions from the panel? Hello, any questions from the panel? Any questions, comments, anything? Everybody slept off or uh, I hope nobody died. No, 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 no question, Professor. Yeah, please, Manuel, please. <laughs> no, 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 no question. All okay. was, was very clear. I okay. just take very notes. Dr. Deepak, he has a question. Can you please uh, unmute yourself, Dr. Deepak, and uh, ask? He's asking about the optic struct attachment. Okay. Uh, so yeah. when, you are taking, when you are taking, Deepak, when you are taking out the optic strut, you you can it can be really a question from my side just just a second uh, dr shashank yeah no. just a so it it when you take it out literally you can get into the sphenoid sinus okay so what you need to understand is the optic strut is literally between the optic nerve and the carotid so you have to make space between the optic nerve and the carotid but what is actually happening is the carotid is a turn like that and the optic nerve is like this so you need to make a space this triangle is the optic strut so it's attached to the sphenoid bone so you have to take it off the sphenoid bone and sometimes it's quite often that you enter the sphenoid sinus in which case you have to plug the sinus otherwise you do this fantastic dolange approach and everything and your patient will suffer because of a stupid uh, leak is never stupid but you know because of your your stupidity actually because you you think you have done a fantastic thing and you forgot little thing and you, you and your patient will suffer because of this, okay? So you must always remember uh, that you should not, if you take the optic strut, you should always plug it. Uh, I plug it immediately. So this is the importance of the attachment of the, uh, of the strut. Okay. Uh, okay, he got this, he got this. Uh, Dr. Sashank, uh, your question, please. Dr. Sashank, you can ask now. You know, there's a Dr. Kabulo. Dr. Kabulo, could you please introduce yourself? Are you still there? Hello. Thank there you. he is. Thank okay. You so much. John, Dr. Rakesh is all, uh, online with us. Can you uh, please promote him? My name is Dr. Kabulo from uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Currently, I'm a uh, final year neurosurgery resident at the University of Zimbabwe under uh, Professor Kalango. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. You're welcome. I met Kalangu last week in... Uh, I don't call him Kalangu, I call him Kazadi. So Kazadi and his Mumbai. wife was in Mumbai. So we met yeah. and uh, it, he's my very good friend. I have uh, cooked in his home in Zimbabwe twice or thrice yeah. maybe. I have, we come we every year. We were with you here twice in Zimbabwe and then we met you again in Istanbul. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, we have Dr. Rakesh with us. He just joined us. He's one of the... Uh, faculties for this course. Dr. Rakesh, can you please introduce yourself? Hey, Rakesh. Rakesh, are you there? Oh, just not. Okay. Dr. Shashank, you had a question. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, I have, Professor I have, can you hear me? Yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes. Uh, what is the possibility that uh, with the Dolings approach, you can, uh, Dolings and the Kawasis, uh, you can uh, reach the basilar artery? Because there is a real possibility of uh, carotid arteries injuries or uh, what is your comment upon the carotid C3, C4 injuries uh, based upon the Dolings going post-row inferiorly reaching the basilar? 
in 50 cases, we've had one injury, and that is in a connective patient with a connective tissue disorder who, um, who had very weak vessels. We've had one injury, and I showed this in Mumbai last, uh, last week. But uh, we, I mean, I can show you the exposure. It is so wide that you know you can literally go in there. It is not like the usual uh, exposures for basilar. You should probably come to our center, see how we expose, then you will know. Good, good, good. Good. Okay, Umayma. Hello, Umayma. Umayma, can you please introduce yourself? Beg your pardon? Umayma, Umayma, there's a panelist. Yes. Hey, hello, I'm Umayma, medical student in my fourth year in Morocco. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. You're most welcome. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, Dr. Rakesh, do you have any comments? He's quiet today. <laughs> yeah, the panel is quite quiet today. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess I, that's... I think that's I have bored cool. everybody to death. <laughs> Dr. Sakib, any questions? Well, the lecture was uh, very self-explanatory, and uh, Dr. I uh, quite extensively explained the unlocking mechanism, which was quite uh, easy, uh, easily explained. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I have one another one? Sure, sure. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, uh, Professor, if at all, uh, you can just highlight the differentials which can be approached with this, I mean, differential problems or pathologies which can be approached with this uh, uh, DeLong's and uh, Kawasis approach. What are the different pathologies which can be approached with this DeLong's and Ka Kawasis approach? Uh, you don't need... Uh, can we just mute? Can you please mute again, again? Dr. Shishan? Yes. Yes, Dr. Chirin, please. Looks like somebody is killing you. Yeah. Uh, John, can you mute all the panelists? Yes, I'll do that. Okay. Just one Wait for something going on in the background. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Okay. John, you need to mute everyone. Okay. Panelists are multitasking us. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So, uh, I mean, his question was, what is the pathology that I use uh, for both Dolings and Kawasi? I mean, you know, uh, I'm just telling you unlocking. It doesn't mean that you have to do this approach for everything. That will be like, you know, uh, using a cannon for a, uh, using a, probably a huge cannon for a, this is not needed. Most of the time you, uh, you just unlock the only time yeah, yeah, that is it. That is the, that is the one, uh, that is the art article. That is the article. The only time I, I will need both Dolang and Kawase is for sphenopetroclinoidal, sphenopetroclival meningiomas. So I am doing one uh, next week in India. So if I can record this, maybe, and if it goes well, I can show you. Okay, I can record this and show you where I will be operating. Um, both the dollings and the Kawase. I will do the Kawase drilling as well as the dollings and the unlock everything. And then I will this massive, huge lesion. It will depend a lot on its consistency, but if it is uh, okay, then I can show you the recording. This is the only indication for a dollings and a Kawase. But the unlocking, all the bacillar tipaneurysms, craniopharyngiomas, clinoidal meningiomas, for everything I do this unlocking. It can be sagittal unlocking, it can be axial unlocking, it will be, it can be uh, sylvian dissection, which means oblique intradural unlocking in various degrees, tailoring for the approach. There is no need to do something uh, massively and open everything when you just need, don't, don't need it. Okay, we have Dr. Rakesh. Can you please introduce and have any comments, please? Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Sorry for my audio uh, disturbances. Uh, 
Uh, I am Dr. Rakesh Avi, uh, a final year resident in neurosurgery from Kolkata, India. Uh, I am very glad to be a part of this panelist and uh, thank you so much uh, Dr. John, Dr. Hira and thank you very much Dr. Aip sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We have Dr. Sen Ho. He is working currently with Professor Yuha. Dr. Sen, can you please introduce? Dr. Sen Hu, he is working with Professor Yuha in uh, China at the moment. Yuha? Yeah. I sent to convey my big hugs to my dear friend Yuha. Yeah, Zen, Zen works with Yuha. He works with Yuha. I'm one of the students. Uh, I work with Yuha. I'm one of the students. So I have a long way to go. Okay. okay, so any more questions, comments, any, any further queries? I think we're all done for today. Okay, then that's it. I think, John. See you guys. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Thank you, Professor. Thank you. We have our next Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, lecture Thank next you. Sunday, same time. Uh, most mm -hmm. probably, yes. Uh, so we will be forwarding all the details. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay.